Hey guys, it's Yishan. Today I am coming at you guys with a math in Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Now a reminder, these videos do take quite a bit of time to make. I made this one on stream with my viewers. It took me about three hours just to get the presentation done. So if you enjoy these types of videos, please consider subscribing. It helps me make more of them. And I know these are liked by quite a few people. Um, so today's card is Pot of Prosperity. Now this is a new card coming out in Blazing Vortex and I am going to show you the math behind this card so you can make the right decisions when you try to put it in your deck. Okay, let's get started here. Let's just start off by reading the card really quickly so we're all on the same page. You can banish three or six cards from, of your choice from your extra deck face down. For the rest of this turn, after this card resolves, any damage your opponent takes is halved. Also, excavate cards from the top of your deck equal to the number of cards banished. Add one excavated card to your hand. Place the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. You can only activate one Pot of Prosperity per turn. You cannot draw cards by card effects the turn you activate this card. Okay, so that's what it does. A lot of you probably already knew that. So, when we're evaluating Pot of Prosperity, how are we going to decide what decks to put it into? And the cards that I see are obviously the most similar to it are the other pot cards, right? And the main question we have to ask ourselves from a math standpoint of view, because we're always trying to answer a question is, you know, how much is an excavate six worth to you versus a draw two, right? That's the big question, because these cards, Pot of Extravagance, Pot of Desires, both are draw two cards, and they give you raw card advantage, whereas Pot of Prosperity gives you card selection. So how much is that Excavate 6 worth to you? Well, what kinds of decks are looking for specific cards? Uh, one great example of a card or a deck that I think Pot of Prosperity would be really good in is uh, a deck like ABC, which uses Union Hanger, because Union Hanger is really, really important and really, really integral to that deck. It's like a literally like a plus four if you're able to draw it. Um, you know, decks that are looking for specific cards or specific combo pieces may be interested in playing Pot of Prosperity. If your deck doesn't have that much synergy together and you're looking for more a raw amount of cards, then obviously Pot of Desires or Pot of Extravagance may be the better fit for you. Okay, so how do we evaluate this from a mathematical standpoint? Um, well, the first thing you have to evaluate is obviously, can you pay the cost of the, the pot cards that you're evaluating? And, you know, I think we want to assume yes, because there's, you probably wouldn't be need to do any math if you can't really afford to play the cost. So let's just assume yes, that we can pay the, the cost of these pot cards quite easily. Um, so, you know, extravagance is obviously a plus one. Prosperity depends. And, and the question is, what does it depend on? Right, and I think, we're getting to the question we want to answer with math and the math behind Pot of Prosperity is how much does it help you mathematically, like a raw percentage. We want to know the real numbers when it helps to trying to draw your key cards. Okay. And if you're at this point in the video and you just want to know how to do the calculations, you can skip to the timestamp that I'm about to put up now. Um, and I will show you how to do the math uh, questions or just how to do the math on Yu-Gi-Oh!.party. Um, maybe if you get there and you want to come back and listen to the how the math is actually done and understand it so that you can make decisions in the future, uh, then feel free to come back. But there you go. So this is the question we're trying to answer. How much does it help you when trying to draw your key cards, right? Okay, so how do we do the calculations? Well, first we have to figure out all our variables, right? And we have basically two variables. We have our deck size in our and how many of the key card we're trying to draw in our deck right so the, let's just use a baseline calculation for this and we'll just take a 40 card deck five card hand right and so let's say we have five union hangers in our deck because i think abc is a great example to display how pot of disparity helps it we've got like a terraforming a sabotation and triple um triple union hanger okay so we have five union hangers in our deck so we've got some math here now let's start with some math and i'm going to show you this visually as well as textually but let's just start with the math. Um, I use the hypergeometric probability calculator. Um, if you guys don't know how to use that, by the way, you can just let me know. I'll make a video about how to use that. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but here are the percentages for us. So the chance of opening in a five card hand, a union hanger is about 40 or in a 40 card deck is about 50.66%. Um, this is for any, like if you have a five of of a card, this will always be the tr true. In this case, we have five union hangers. The chance that we open a pot of disparity is around 33.75%. We run three of it. That's just what the probability is in a 40 card deck. 
and the chance that we draw neither is about 30.6%, right? Okay, so I have a little visual probability for you guys here. Let's go to my paint tool over here. I've drawn a little bit. So we've got our brush here. I'm going to make it red so we understand here. We've got, you know, imagine that this entire box, right, this entire neither box is representing of all the possible hands you can draw, right? And we just said that um, Union Hanger, if we, these are all the hands we draw, right? And we said all these hands, the chance, the, the number of these hands is about, we just said it was about 50.66%. Okay, so this is 50.66%. Apologize for my horrible handwriting, right? And uh, our chances of opening Pot of Prosperity are about 33.75% chance, right? 33.75%, okay? And I said to you the chance of uh, everything else, right? So this is, you know, everything else outside these two probabilities, right? Is 30, 30.60%. 30 so 30.6% is everything else about, right? So. Like I said, this is every single hand. So all these probabilities should sum up to one um, because, you know, that this is considering every single hand in, in in your deck, right? Which just imagine it visually. Imagine like a dot represents a hand and a, so a dot here represents both. A dot here represents Pot of Prosperity. A dot here represents uh, neither Union Hanger or Pot of Prosperity. A dot here means Union Hanger, but not Pot of Prosperity, right? So if we add all these up, um, we notice something funny. And the funny thing is, is that we get 115%, which is wrong. We expect it to add up to a total of one or, or 100%. How in the world did we get 115%? And let's look again really, really closely at our image here, because I guarantee you we didn't do the math wrong. But notice how when we counted the union hanger hands we counted everything in here but notice how when we counted the pot of prosperity hands we also counted the both section and all this so notice how we double counted this middle section here we double counted this middle section oops what does that tell us that tells us actually that this extra 15 percent above 100 that tells us that this is actually the probability that we open um, both Pot of Prosperity and a and Union Hanger. So if we want to find the chance that we only open Pot of Prosperity, which is important, why do we have to calculate the chance that we only open Pot of Prosperity? We, we find that it's 18.75%, but why is this so important? And let me explain that to you really quickly. It's so important because we don't actually care about the hands where we draw Union Hanger, right? Because the chance that we draw Union Hanger, Pot of Prosperity doesn't help us, right? We already have the Union Hanger, so we'd rather probably just draw two cards. However, Pot of Prosperity helps us when we draw it, but there is no Union Hanger. That's the key here, right? Because when there is no Union Hanger that we draw Pot of Prosperity, then Pot of Prosperity has a chance to find us a Union Hanger. That's why we're so obsessed with this probability of only opening Pot of Prosperity and not Union Hanger. And we have been able to calculate that as 18.75%. Okay, so that's how we got this number, right? And I hope that graphical explanation was useful for you. Okay, so the chance we draw a Hanger off of Prosperity if we don't already have a hanger in our hand, it's 63.4%. Again, you can find that using a hypergeometric calculator. Like I said, if you want to know how I got these numbers or how to use the hypergeometric calculator, just let me know in the comments below. I'll make a video for you. Okay, so since these hands occur 18.75% of the time, and that's where we draw prosperity without the hanger, that's what we're focused on because that's where prosperity is going gonna, is gonna to put in the work and give us, give us the hangers that we wouldn't have got otherwise. We can see that um, if we multiply these two numbers together, we will find the number of hands in total 
that pot of prosperity helps us draw hanger and that is 11.88 percent so pot of prosperity is going to help us draw hanger 11.88 percent more of the time than if we didn't have it in the deck that's pretty pretty good actually that's a 12 percent increase um, where if you just weren't playing any draw cards, that would be that. Um, one good thing to compare it though to is that we should compare it to uh, a draw two pot. Because if if you're like playing like a deck like Alter Geist or or ABC that's playing Desires already, and you want to know if you should make the change between the Extravagance and um, the Pot of Desires to to that uh, Pot of uh, Prosperity then we have to decide here. And so let's calculate how much um, benefit Pot of Desires, guys. Now, all the calculations are the exact same because, you know, there's three Pot of Desires in our theoretical deck and three Pot of Prosperity, except for the fact that Pot of Desires only draws two cards instead of looking at six. So instead of getting a 63.4% to find a Union Hanger, we only get about a 25, 27% chance. So if we multiply that by 18.75, we only get a 5% benefit, right? Which means that Pot of Prosperity finds Union Hanger about 6.8% more often than Desires would. So every seven out of 100 games, that Pot of Disparity is gonna find you a Union Hanger that Desires wouldn't, which is quite a bit. Um, and considering how important Union Hanger is in that deck um, and how you know roughly equivalent the costs are between Disparity and Desires, I could see the power of Pot of dis Prosperity in that deck. So that's a, a number for you right there. So that's some comparisons, right? Okay, so that is the end for our example. I promised you that I would show you how to actually um, do the calculations for yourself um, if you want to do it easily. So basically what you want to go is you want to go to a, a website called yugioh.party dot com um, or yugio dot party. There's no dot com. And um, here's what you're going to want to do. So you're going to put uh, your deck size and five cards in your hand and you're going to figure out how many cards exist in the deck that you want to find so card that you want to find in this case i was thinking about alter guys they have three fakers three mellow seeks uh three spoofing and a one for one to find fakers so i said there's 10 fakers in that deck we of course have three pots and so we want to find the chance that we don't that we don't draw a faker so that's why i have zeros and zeros here and the chance that we do draw one two or three pots and that's a 21.66 percent chance now you want to open another Yugo Party tab and say, okay, well, what is the chance that if we have a pot, what is the chance we draw Faker? And since we know that our our deck size actually, whoops, is a little bit off here. Our deck size, um, we know there's 35 cards left in our deck because we know we drew a five card hand. Um, so we have 35 cards left in our deck and we either have two because we're drawing two cards off Desire. So that's 49.58 percent um or we have six right so we have 89.09 and 49.58 so what you're going to do over here is you're going to want to take the two percentages you got here so in this case we have the, the one from six here 89.09 so i got my numbers a little bit mixed up because i was drawing too many cards we have 89.09 and then we take the number we got off desires which is 49.58 so 0.4958 these are representing the percentages, the difference in percentages between dis prosperity and desires. And then we want to multiply it by this percent that we got here because that is the percent chance that we open prosperity without the card that we want to find, right? And we simply have this formula right here. We take the first two and subtract them and then multiply by the chance that we only draw a pot of prosperity. Hit the calculator. Oops, we just hit enter here. And it shows us that we have about, gain about a... 8.5% increase um, when drawing the to get uh, to the multi faker with Pot of Disparity. So that is how you do the formula, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I wanted to give a quick shout out to my friend Connor, who knows nothing about Yu Gi Oh! but wanted to shout out anyway. So there you go, Connor, and you got your shout outs. Um, and until next time, guys, I will see you guys in the next video.